uh, and Madeline and Beth, and then we'll get started. So good morning, everyone. Um, we are doing a listing series. I'm so happy to see so many of you on here. And if any of your, um, of your friends have uh, missed this today, it's going to, Kelly's going to be putting it on uh, our Hudson Valley Group uh, YouTube channel so that it'll be there for all of you. Um, so thank you, Miss Kelly, for moderating and you know manning the chat and all of that great stuff that you do. We wouldn't be able to do what we do without our ASCs. So um, before we get into the guts of this, I want to just have a little chat with our two panelists, Madeline Wiebeck, who is uh, a member of uh, Hudson Valley uh, Realty here in New City, and Beth Affeld, who is... Um, in uh, North, she's actually the broker of record in North as well. So ladies, thank you so much for agreeing to, to do this with us today. You're welcome. You're thank welcome. you. Um, Madeline, we're gonna start with you. Tell, give everybody a, a quick synopsis. How long you've been in business? Um, I've been in business for 18 years. Mm -hmm. Um, I've been with Keller Williams in New City since we opened the doors in New City, so I'm not sure. I think that's about 15 years now. Right, it is. As a matter of fact, we are celebrating our 15th anniversary, and we're going to be having a big party in September. Yeah, okay. So I was one of the original um, people that came on board when Keller Williams, nobody heard of Keller Williams in um, New York at all, probably. Came from a small boutique, uh, Bear McIntosh, down in Piermont on the river, um, that's where I spent my first couple of years learning, learning real estate. Right. Very good. And um, what about, and, and you, so, so you were there first and now tell everybody you have a team, right? Yeah. So um, now I have a team. Um, so I'm the primary listing agent. Um, and then I have, now I have three buyers agents, two full-time and one's part-time. And then I have a full-time assistant. Okay. Um, so probably started the team I'm trying to think, I probably started getting a team together around me in 2010, 2011. Okay. So um, I, I just want to stop you for one second. I want to point out the significance of that date. So 2010, 2011 was when we, the, the mortgage started to shift back. Cause that was after the years where things were really, really difficult. Correct. Yeah, I mean, my reason, my reason for doing it was different. Um, I realized, so my husband got very, very sick in those years, and he ended up passing away. And I spent a year and a half in the hospital down at Sloan Kettering. And, you know, so that's when I realized that if you don't have great people surrounding you and with you, and at the time, I did have one person with me, thank God, and ended up having a, a crazy great year. But um, that's when I truly realized that you need to have other people because if anything happens in our lives, um, you really, you're really out of business. Right. So you, you have to have, you have support. to be surrounded. You have to have right. support. Right. And you really have a fantastic team. You've got, you know, Kristen you. and Colm and Christy and uh, your sister-in-law, right? Is yeah, your part Terry, time? Terry, yeah. Right. I haven't, do you know, I haven't met her yet. Mm, she's I don't think every time she's come in, I haven't been in the office, but I need to, I need to meet her. Yeah, so, lovely. all right. Well, great. Thank you so much for joining us today. I appreciate it. Beth, who is the, the, the one of the, the founders of North, we have two founders here today. Okay. So um, tell us your story, love. Well, first, I want to thank you for butchering the shortest name in the world. My name is Alfeld, and I am called Alfred, Alfredo. I mean, my we have a thing in my family. My name's mispronounced so many times that I don't even know how to say it anymore. <laughs> my daughter-in-law is a realtor in um, California, and she just sponsored a, a baseball t-ball team, and they spelt the name wrong. It says Alfred. <laughs> so anyway, it's Alfeld. It's Alfeld. I'm so I'm, I'll, No, listen, I just, I'll I just never say it wrong again. <laughs> and, no, it's fine. You probably will. Um, so um, I have been in the business for about 18 years. I also started with a boutique firm, but unfortunately, um, I stayed with that boutique firm for a long time, too long. And um, I came over to Keller Williams. 
a different Keller Williams up in Albany, but the, they were in Albany and I do my business down here. I couldn't do business in Ulster. So, um, and then uh, Vicki Walpert um, reached out to me and said that, you know, they were opening an office in um, Kingston. And I was like, oh, a new office. Like, I fought her, I fought Anna, I fought everybody. And, um, you know, once, once, um, once they, once I really got what was going on in the vision, I was, I was full on and, um, I love Keller Williams and, um, yeah, I'm happy to be Thank here you so much. I'm so happy that you are here now. You have an assistant, right? I do. I do. So, um, the other thing is, so Madeline said her husband got sick. I had some stuff come up. So, uh, personally, so for me, it's like, it's just me. I'm a, I was a one woman show. This is my either third or fourth assistant. I hired a friend. Don't do that. It's very hard to, it's hard to fire a friend. They don't like that. Yeah. Um, I've had a couple of virtuals and uh, one of the things that I learned about myself is I, which I think most of us, I'm not a good trainer. Like, I just think you're the assistant. You should know how to do this. <laughs> so right now we're getting, um, we're, we're working on getting, um, I have all my protocols in order. When I get a buyer, A, B, C, D, like I've said it to them enough times, but, and I, when I wrote it all down, I'm thinking I've known how to do this for years and I just do it like, right. It becomes they, automatic. Like, right. you don't even think. So, um, so I was almost going to let her go. And then I had this epiphany that it's me, it's not her. And, um, so, um, she's right now part-time she's in school, but, um, the other thing is because, you know, I'm getting a little bit older and I don't want to work like I do. I am thinking of building a team, but I'm going to do it slowly. Um, uh, travel is something that's high on my, uh, list and I want to start traveling and being able to leave without taking my computer with me, not taking it without having to open it up every 10 minutes. I actually am, I'm active on the state, um, uh, NISAR, and I, we, we go to Italy every other year. And the first year I went, and now this is with all realtors. I was on my computer. I'm writing, I was writing an offer on the plane from JFK to flying over. They're like, do you ever stop? Actually, so isn't, um, isn't it they always say if you really need to have business come in, go on vacation and yeah, it'll all pick up. Yeah, but I was the only one. A lot of these, like it was past presidents, like they were, I think their businesses were winding down. So um, so anyway, that's really um a goal of mine. I don't want a giant team, but I need to have dependable people. So it's not just me. Well, listen, I'm sure that uh, I'm sure that Madeline can assist you with some advice there. So you guys can talk about it afterward. All right. So let's jump into this for the listing uh, topic that we have today. So I want to ask you guys, you've been, both of you have been in business for a substantial period now. How has your uh, listing generation? Has it changed your lead generation for listings? Has that changed at all in the last couple of years, given what we've gone on? Mad Madeline's nodding her head. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I'd say this year more than ever, um, I'm working my listing pipeline nonstop. So I, we, use, we use command. Um, and so I'll go through opportunities, but we also have the old listing pipeline that Keller Williams, I think you could still get it um, online. I loved their old listing pipeline sheet. So we have that downloaded in our um, Google Drive. And so I also put every single person that I ever go on a um, listing appointment with or who tells me they may be selling their house in the next year or two, everybody's in that listing pipeline. And then they get rated, you know, whether or not they're going to be right away, six months, a year, whatever. And I have never spent so much time going through my listing pipeline as these last, I'm going to even say six months. So like I even have it right here. So like I even have the list in front of me that I literally look at every single day. We are on the Google Drive together with my team. So whether we're you know, I'm always making calls because I actually, you know, I like to make the calls and just, so my conversation lately has just been, I know you guys had me over. I did a market analysis. You weren't ready to go, but I have to tell you that there's probably no better time ever to sell your house than right now. 
Um, and whatever price I told you six months ago, a year ago, three months ago, it's not the same. It's probably better. I'm sure it's better. And we're happy to come back and do a new market analysis for you and let you know. And it's been really successful. Lots of people who were kind of on the fence are, are making the move. So like this month, I think we're putting on like 11 listings, which is to us, this is incredible because there's hardly anything coming on. Right. So that's a lot. That's well, a lot for it, one month. Even, first of all, it's a lot anyway, but the fact that we are in such a, a, a seller's market and we have such limited inventory, it's even more impressive, Madeline. So, yeah. so no. this is going to be, this is going to be a big listing month. And obviously we all know listings are everything right now because, you know, if it goes on, if it comes on the market, it's selling as long as people aren't, you know, ridiculous. Right. With, with pricing. Absolutely. Okay. And Beth, what about the same question for you in terms of your lead gen for listings? How has that changed in recent times or has it? So, um, so when I was with the boutique firm, the thing that I learned was fly by the seat of your pants. So I'm a late bloomer um, with actually working my database and um, keeping track of things. So I um, What's changed for me is I have started working my database as well. I am not as faithful as I want to be, um, but I've been doing the uh, DT, D2. Mm -hmm. You go through and just reaching out to people, um, even if it's just a text. Um, another thing, I don't know if anybody listens to James Shaw. He has the Shift Club. Like we all listen to that during... So, um, you know, he talks about reaching out to people and just offering them a market analysis, even if they're not willing to sell. Just saying, you know, you might be able to cash out, you know, the kids going to college, I'll be willing to do one for you. And, you know, it's a way to open conversation because again, I didn't work my database for years. So it's a way to open conversation and the same thing. And I have had some people say, you know, we were going to move in a couple of years, but we're thinking maybe sooner right. now that we see, because this market is not going to last. It's just not, you know, that it's, it can't, it can't sustain itself. So, um, that's one of the things that I've been doing that's that I, I hadn't done in the past. And, yeah, and that's I, what I should have been doing. Right. Well, I think one of the things when you talk about that, that's always very um, surprising is when people don't realize what their house is actually worth. And we as as experts, especially on the sell side, need to be able to say to our people that are in our pipeline and in our database, do you understand what you're sitting on? So when you open that information and you share that and, and, and you know, verify your expertise or validate your expertise, you know, it really shows you as the authority because they think, you know, right now values are so high. You, sometimes people will come in here and say, can you run these comps with me? Because I don't know if I'm right. And it's like, oh yeah, you're right. And that's how much it is. So it's, you know, it's a great thing. Yeah. All right. So I want to go, and this kind of leads itself into my next question. The services that you're providing to your sellers, because listen, our best source of business is our, is referrals from our own clients, right? So Beth, I'll start with you on this one. Have you changed any of the offerings that you are, are doing with your sellers right now in terms of um, gener to, to generate uh, referrals at all? Um, I really haven't. Again, I'm in the process of getting organized. And one of the things that I do, I have an expectation sheet that I send to them. And I have one that I send, I have an expectation sheet um, or what to expect when you sell that I send to um, my listing appointments. Mm -hmm. um, it's because it doesn't have all my information in there. I'm not giving them my attorneys and my, you know, whatever, whatever else information is in there. And, um, and I think and then I have one that I send when they do sign with me. Like now that you sign with me, this is what's going to happen. Right. Um, so that is something that I've changed. So the expectations are laid out. And I don't think, I mean, I, I don't think that there's a lot of people that are doing that because if they're interviewing other people, I'm ahead of the curve, right? Like, oh, they, she told us what to do. And so I think I'm getting listings because of that. And I have the same thing for buyers. And um, and I do get feedback that like I've, I've worked with other agents and haven't seen anything like this. So I think that um, I think that that's something that helps me to stay uh, stay uh, ahead of the curve. I think that's brilliant. And what do, what is they we always say in the absence of value, people go for price. So you're really you know, proving 
your your value in that situation. Mm -hmm. What about you, Miss Madeline? <clears throat> yeah, I think I think things have changed quite a bit as far as so I think the value that we try to let people know about is number one that they're getting a whole team that they're going to have Christy and, and they get to meet our whole team. So for, since January, I've been in Florida and we've listed a bunch of houses. So right now I've changed where Kristen was my lead buyer agent forever, uh, for not forever, but for the last six years. And so now when I'm away and out of town, uh, Kristen and I share listings together. So my team will go on a listing appointment um, and sometimes um, I'll be on it too on a Zoom. So this is what has changed since um, COVID. So I'll be on a, a FaceTime call really. Um, and I'll be, you know, saying hi to the people. And a lot of times it's people I know, and sometimes it's not, but I'll be going through the house with them, but they're kind of meeting the whole team. So they're meeting Christy, who's my full-time assistant. They're meeting Colm, who's a full-time buyer's agent. Kristen will be there. One person's taking notes about their house. Um, one person is explaining the process of um, the lockbox and all that. And then I've already told them what we're going to do for them as a team. So the big things in this market that I think people need to know is that, you know, the easy part is getting a buyer for your house. Um, the hard part is getting it from the accepted offer to the closing table. And the big value that we add to them is that we're, there's, there's lots of it and we have it all spelled out. But the biggest thing is we're going to be um, obviously going through all the offers, you're going to get them all together on an Excel spreadsheet. We'll knock it down to, okay, these are the top two or three best offers. I'm going to personally call up the mortgage person and vet everybody completely so that we know for certain if we accept that offer, that that offer is going to make it to the closing table. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I've been calling mortgage people and making sure that this pre-approval is really from today because interest rates are changing. Yes, so that is quickly. absolutely, absolutely critical. You've got to look right. at those, those pre-approvals and on the buy side, make sure your people get updated pre-approvals. Right. And then even like a lot of people are coming from not in the area. So a lot of people's pre-approvals are maybe from Long Island or from somewhere else. So the other thing that I let the sellers know is that I'm calling and making sure that that mortgage person also knows you know, that in Rockland County, um, you know, taxes are prepaid ahead. That's not done in every county and every place. So you have to make sure that the mortgage person knows your county and what's going on. Um, the other big things that most people don't know about or don't want to handle the, on their own is all the CO issues. And I'll tell them, depending on where their house is, you know, what we're going to deal with. And, and when we go through the house, I'll tell them like, you know, I'll be asking, of course, do you have a CO for the deck? Do you have a CO? Is that shed looks too close to the property line? Um, this town, they're going to come inside your house. This town, they're not going to come in. And a lot of people have no clue. They don't, they're like, oh my God, CO, what's a CO? Um, I, this is how the house was when I bought the house. And I explained to them, it, you know, yeah, back then that was fine. But right now um, the towns are all over this and that may not fly. So we'll help you. I have people in place to help you um, if you don't have COs or everything, I have people who are going to help you get those COs in an expedited fashion, because the last thing we want is the CFO to hold up the closing in the 11th hour, and now somebody's mortgage, uh, you know, the rate that they got locked in, in is going to be expiring. So, um, you know, it's all these extra things. We also help with staging the house. So once somebody will sign the listing with us, then we're going to help you on staging, because for too many years, we were helping people do that. And then, especially in this market, people will just be like, oh, they got their price. And now their neighbor's son's friend, you know, came to them and wants to buy the house. So we're getting smarter. That we just don't want to be wasting our time with everybody. Um, that now we're making sure that people will sign, you know, the agreement with the rider so that we can help them get their house prepped and ready. Mm -hmm. um, and they're not, you know, they're not just going to sell it on their own or do everything right. we told them to do. And exactly. And it's your time because here's the deal. If you're wasting time on a listing that falls off, that's time that you could have spent on a listing that you would be getting. So, you know, very important. Yeah. Yeah. Madeline, you raise a lot of great points and there's just something that I want to um, remind everybody. So now we have uh, the, um, 
Assure Abstract is our is the title company that we've started. And for, Kristen will do a search for them at no charge to see if there's anything that needs to you know happen that could cause a problem with the type on the abstract. She just did something for one of our agents. They found you know a mortgage that had not been satisfied, and it's so much easier when you have time to clear those things up than opposed to right at, you know right before you're getting to closing and now everybody's scrambling. So offer that service to your people. And if you have any questions yeah. about it, I know I didn't explain it properly, yeah. but- There was a question I saw that William Barraza just yeah. asked. He asked if we, char if we charge people for, um, or if people pay themselves for pictures and staging. Um, no, that's part of our services, William, is that we're, we always hire a professional photographer who's great. Um, and that, that is you know, what we pay for. And that there's lots of agents, you'll see it all the time, that the pictures are god awful. Um, they took them themselves. They're dark. The sun is coming yeah. through the window. It, there's stuff all over the counters. I mean, we yeah. we do the staging. Like we go in on picture day as a whole team, and we're all literally getting each room ready before the photographer comes into that room. We are prepping it and then moving on to the next room so that everything is perfect. If chairs have to be moved, if things have to be opened up, like we're there to do it. And then, um, you know, you don't have to live that way is what we tell people, but you do need to have it perfect for the pictures. So it, uh, Madeline, thank you so much for addressing William Phillips question. Um, I think that the, the, one of the biggest mistakes that we, our industry makes is those pictures. If you open up a picture and you cringe when you look at it on a listing photo, everybody else is doing the same thing. And this is the expectation, the bar, you want to set this because you're, we're all looking for referrals, right? Everybody wants to get referral business from their current clients. And when you provide them with a, an A-class experience, then they know that they you're safe to refer to a friend. There's a there's a, a a diagram I saw once, like a rings drop of water in a bucket, right? So the first the first bit is that that drop of water. That's the first business. And then the second ring is the first referral. The third, the fourth, you know that kind of thing, and it goes out. So remember your pictures the way you show up, the expectations that Beth is setting, that Madeline is setting, letting them know, covering all this stuff, you could be out to the 10th ring. And that's repeat business that's coming to you because you've, you've really taken very good care of your, your people. So yeah, I just, wanted to, I just wanted to add on to a few things that Madeline said um, with the pictures, the same thing. I'm there, it's just me and my photographer, unfortunately, but I tell my people, it has to look like nobody lives here like get rid of everything. And then you go back to how you want to live. But for the pictures, I've actually seen a, um, uh, I don't remember where it was, somebody laying in bed in a picture. <laughs> yeah, it's like, what are you, what are you It might've been, a, it might've been a Facebook group that I'm on for realtors. Yeah, like, there was one where there was like, you know, a naked guy in the mirror is taking, <laughs> no good. Anyway, um, Rob Klein just asked a question. How, how do you deal with a hoarder? So, so I don't know, I, for me, I don't know that I would pay for, um, I don't, I've never really had a hoarder. I, the, my problem is um, apartments. People really don't care what the apartment looks like, right? So that's a problem. And I go in and try to move things and it's, you know, it is what it is. You can only do what you can do. Um, that's, that's what I've yeah. found. Yeah. My Madeline, career. what do you say? Uh, well, I, I'm not, I don't think I've had a true hoarder, but I've certainly had people who have tons and tons of stuff in their house um, that you can't even get pictures. So the first thing we do is, and, and it depends if they're going to be on board or not, but we either try to get them or a family member on board that we have to get somebody in there to help them. Because usually it's somebody who kind of can't do it themselves. Right. It's either so, physical or, I mean, well, hoarding is a disorder. Like this is. A, yeah. A, yeah. I, I know what hoarding is. I've seen yeah. it, but, but I luckily haven't really had a, a true hoarder house, but I've definitely had houses that were packed pretty, pretty good. But if you, if they're, if you can get them to be open, we've had some people where we get like a home organizer in there to help them. And it's mm -hmm. kind of expensive though. So it really depends on your client, whether or not they're going to do it. 
but you know, if you can get the family to help first, that's the best thing. Mm -hmm. um, we got actually junk have, or something, a junk. Yeah, we, we, we use the got junk people. We use all those. We even have another guy who comes in and has helped a lot of our people. He'll just keep taking stuff. And um, he kind of did it really low fee or almost free because then he would resell stuff and all that. So he's helped a lot of our people like get ready, but that, that is a tough one. That's, that's the hardest when people have just so much stuff that, and then it's going to come down to price, right? Because if you price something, I mean, everything will sell if it's priced right, but you know, you really want to help them get rid of as much so they get. No, them. absolutely. Yeah. When back in my days, when I was in production, I had a couple of those. I had a, a clients one time they were going through a divorce and you know, the staging, I kept asking, you need to throw these things out, move stuff, what have you. And finally, like you said, you change the, the, you don't have to live this way. Right. But you want to prep this for the picture. I was moving stuff from one side of the room oh, to yeah. the other, taking the picture, putting the stuff back, taking the picture over here. And it's, it's a sad situation, but you have to help it. And look, Rob, the question that you asked, if worse comes to worse, you take a picture of the outside of the house and you know, just for marketing if they will not clean it up inside right. but we do our best to help our clients you know prep on that right i don't yeah. even know if she is a hoarder she just tells me she has too much stuff and she's embarrassed she doesn't even want me to go into the home to see it so um, but she's ready to sell she says but she just has to get the stuff out she's not ready she was talking about doing a loan so she can renovate I'm like don't renovate it's the perfect time just clean it out it will yeah. put it into temporary storage it's okay temporary storage make it look empty and then uh, we list it and I think that's the best way. Yeah. But, uh, okay. I, I think you have to, you have to try to get into that house. I mean, I would, I, I and I'm sure you have, but I, I mean, I, what I always say to people is, look, we see this all the time and we can see past everything. We just meet, we are really looking at your space. We're looking at the flow of the home. We're looking at how big your rooms are. You don't have to worry about any of that. We're going to come in and tell you what things should go or, or don't have to go. So like, don't stress over it. And we have people who can help you and try to make it easy for her. And, and if she'll let you get in the house, it may not be as bad. Some people think their house is terrible and you get in there and you're like, wow, there's this this is great. It's not a big deal. <laughs> Um, but then sometimes if she's really that embarrassed, it, it very well okay. may be the case. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Rob. All yeah. right. Um, offer your resources. Offer your resources. Tell her we, we see, like Madeline said, we see this all the time and I have people that can help you. Right. Yeah. Okay. okay. So I want to just switch gears a tiny bit here and talk about the communication that you have with your sphere and in terms of where your business is coming from. So it, it, just in a percentage Okay, uh, Beth, what percentage of your business is sphere versus outside of that? Probably at this point in my career, I would say probably 80 to 85% is sphere. Okay. I've been doing this for a long time. I live in a small community and um, and I do get a lot of referrals even from, you know, Brooklyn moving up, uh, you know, their friends are moving up. So, um, right. so a lot of them. Right, mm -hmm. and Madeline, how about you? <clears throat> You know, we track it every year and it, it actually, it's pretty different each year. Like I always think it's all referral, but um, I will tell you like all referral from sphere, but it's not necessarily like, so we tracked it last year. I wish I should have printed out my list for you so I could see, but we get, we get a lot of actually Keller William agent referrals. We get quite a few Keller William. Oh, agent from referrals outside of the area coming in from outside of the area. Okay. Um, you know, Definitely our biggest still is sphere, but I'm going to say maybe that's 75%. That's still um, a tremendous amount. That's a tremendous yeah, amount. Yeah, it's still going to be your biggest amount. We get a lot. Um, we do farm certain neighborhoods mm -hmm. and um, send out, you know, the, the sheets that tell, you know, exactly what every house is selling for, not just ours mm -hmm. for certain neighborhoods. So the neighborhoods that we hit like that, we definitely get people who go on to get prices of their home. We definitely get listings from, from our mailings. Um, right. Sphere. So uh, the question for you on that. Okay, so you're, you're farming, you're doing mailers. Um, how do you communicate specifically, the 75 and 80% are very nice numbers for you know sphere of influence referrals. How do you communicate with your sphere? Is it, 
multifaceted? Do you pick up the phone? Like, what are you doing to make sure that you're touching your people? Um, one of the things that I do, I do a, um, I'm starting doing a monthly email and it's mm -hmm. not just, I'm great and look at all I sold. I, um, I, I, you are I, great. I, Beth. <laughs> well, they know that that's why they use me. <laughs> um, no, I send out what's going on in the community. Um, I highlight a few businesses when I, and I work in four counties. So I try to pick something from every county. So if I'm doing, so, um, what did I do this month? Oh, March, I did um, Irish pubs and I picked a, a pub from each place and I didn't know all of them. I know the one, I knew the one in um, Ulster and Green County. Those are really my places, but the other ones I had my assistant reach out to them and let them know, hey, I'm going to be highlighting your um, business in my email. Just, you know, who knows what I could pick up. From right. There. And you never so, know, they might be referring you then, which is absolutely um, so that's one, and I and I do my li I do a listing of the month. The same thing. I pick a listing, and not always mine. I don't have a listing in every county usually. So I'll reach out to another agent. Again, it's you know it's staying top of mind, even with another agent that may not want to come to Green County. Um, I'll ask them if I can highlight one of their listings, um, and and then some what to do. I think I did outdoor um, outdoor uh, art exhibits was what I did in the last email. Okay, um, so, uh, and that, that helps to keep me uh, top of mind and connected. I do make phone calls um, as well and texts, just how are you doing? Um, I'm working on the anniversary dates. I mean, again, I'm a late bloomer, you know, so um, just reminding them. If I do get a referral, um, I send them something. I send them a gift. Um, there's an app called Thanks. I think it's T H N K S. Yes, yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, it is awesome. So, um, and I just, um, I just had, I just started using it, and I love it. It's a no-brainer. And the thing is, if they don't want the gift, they can, um, they can donate it to charity. And I don't know. I haven't looked into it that deep. Like, is it, it's probably? I'm sure that they have a few of them, but a charity of their choice. But um, that's when I get a referral from somebody. And, you know, I sent it and they were like, um, I'm so glad it worked out for you. And I didn't get the listing. They wound up listing with a friend, but I still acknowledge that, you know, that they gave me the referral. So um, that's one of the ways I'm touching them. I do want to start to do some events. Um, um, I'm thinking like photography, you know, uh, I'm, I'm there, I live in a great area with, we have gorgeous mountain views and just getting a photographer and doing family pictures, but having them sign up and maybe a food truck or something like that, you know, it, I know that that stuff's not that expensive. Um, so I have a lot on my, I'm, I'm again, I'm just, I'm just uh, getting out there. It's just all keeping in contact though. I do. I call a lot. I um, email, I text. Right. Madeline, how about you, honey? Yeah, that's great. Actually, I like that. That app you said is I just I put it in the chat. I oh, put okay. it in the link. T H N K S. All right. T H N K S, yeah. I like that. yeah. You yeah. can send a coffee. You can send a cup of coffee. You know, you can send and even to another agent, you know, again, yeah. keeping that that's great. Open. Yeah. That's great. I'm gonna use that. Um, yeah, so we keep in touch in a lot of different ways, I guess. I I feel like I I make a lot of calls, but I find like I find that I tend to call the people who are my my biggest referral people. I definitely call them the most, and probably because they're also people that I'm super comfortable calling. Um, there's I'm sure there's people from 10, 15 years ago that I don't really call anymore, but I try to have everybody at least in my database where they're at least getting um, emails from me. Um, we do that magazine that, what is it, Reminder Magazine or whatever, that really nice Reminder magazine. media, yeah. So I have that goes out to a lot of like either my past clients um, or our buyers um, and or people who, again, are that those referral magnets that give us referrals all the time, right. just so they're thinking about us. One um, thing about that Reminder Media, just want everybody to know, once you put your person's name in there, like let's just say you you know somebody that Madeline knows, but they're on her list, you cannot mail to them. They only get one. So right. it's a really it's a really great way to you know lock your sphere mm -hmm. in. And you could do it online now too. And I have people who will say to me, I love that magazine. It's actually a really good magazine, but people will say, I love that magazine. Um, so your face is always sitting on my table or whatever. So, and- some people like they'll forget, especially sometimes older people who maybe don't go on the computer as much. They'll be like, oh, I, I got the number from the magazine. Your cell number's on the magazine. So no. 
Okay. Everybody knew oh. yourself. I don't know who that was. I don't know who that was either. Um, but, they liked it though. <laughs> but that's a good, um, that's a good magazine. Also, I connect with a lot of people, I guess, on social media. So it depends who it is. Um, and I, I try to be a little careful with that because, you know, we have our business page and we have our personal page. Um, but of course, a lot of things spill over. But I think that um, a lot of people who are in this sphere are, I'm also friends with on Facebook or Instagram. So they're also seeing, you know, they're seeing you selling, they're seeing different things going on. So then they're referring you because they're like, oh yeah, she sells a lot. She sells everything in this neighborhood, She whatever. So um, definitely social media is a big way, you know, keeping in touch right. with the sphere. And we've done client events. Um, the photography that you're talking about is um, great. I've been wanting to do that forever. My, my old coach, um, he gave me a whole format for it, which was pretty cool. So we could talk about that later. Um, but I didn't do that. But we've done other client events where we just got... Um, we invited out to all our clients and um, we rented out like a room in a restaurant and um, we had just appetizers and paid for drinks and stuff like that. And we had a really good turnout. Um, and we also um, said that we were doing a raffle for anybody who um, referred us that we were gonna, and we actually, we actually raffled off a week in my house down here in Key Largo, where I am now. I'm giving and you a so, referral today, Madeline. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. So we did that. Um, we did that, but it was just it was just great for everybody to get together. And that was pre-COVID, though. Once COVID hit, uh, we haven't done any client events since then. Right. But I think it is time, and I think yeah. the photography is such a great idea. Um, I can look to see if I still have the write up, but Brandon Ribble, um, the Ribble group, who's a oh, they're fantastic. Group, they gave me their whole playbook on how they did theirs and they were super successful with their photography. I love the idea of your food truck. I think that's a great way to do it. And they would just do it at a park and they would get like five different kind of amateur photographers is what they told me that didn't charge that much. Um, but, you know, you would you would pay for it and you would do like a family shot of, of the people, whether it's in the fall or whatever. And they said that was one of their most successful events yeah, that they did. Yeah, not only family pets, you yeah, you, because not everybody great. has. So, you know, that's right. You know, yeah. Open it up to everybody. Right. Um, yeah. You know, you want to include everybody. So, yeah, that's definitely on my. Uh, yeah. On my list. So another client event idea is when you close on the house if you're on the buy side now right this is just a little tidbit um throw a housewarming party for the buyers in their new home and you handle the invitations and you handle everything and the way that you do that is you do it via email or you know online whatever and you get all of their uh family and friends email addresses phone numbers and what, what is it to, you know, put out some burgers and dogs and a couple of cases of beer and what have you. And now you're the realtor that threw the party for them and it gives you FaceTime. So just, to, and that's, I think, something from the Ribbles as well. Um, you know, it's, uh, they are, we, Rosemary had, uh, is it Gail? Right? Is it it's Gail or Gay Mother's Ribble? Gail, yeah. Um, come out and speak yeah. with us a couple of years ago. Uh, yeah. pre everything was pre COVID, right? Now that we're getting back into life again. But she is a huge, huge um, lister out in, she's in Colorado, L Little Town, Boulder, like that area. Mm -hmm. One of the things that she had done, and it's tremendous, when you have an open house for your listings, she had lawn signs made up, the kind of stake into the ground, 25 of them. And she would have people, and I actually did this, and it was, I had my daughters doing this, going out, they've got your logo, your contact information is out there, and with direction arrows, and you blanket a mile around that house where they're, they're going. You do a couple of open houses in the same town on a very regular basis, people are seeing your signs all over the place. You know, think about it, right? Madeline, you're in, you have a listing in West Nyack and it's, it's, it's you, again, owning that neighborhood. 
Well, really the, the key the key that you didn't make big enough is that every one of those signs has your name on it. Exactly, your name, yeah. your logo, yeah. Yeah. all of that. Yeah, I, I think I did say that, but okay. But yeah, so it, but it's it's your stuff. So it's got yeah. your information on it. And you, you put those out beforehand and it's, you know, it's fantastic. It's a great, great tool. So mm -hmm. I take that one step further and I've not been as faithful as I was, but um, directional signs. I have my name on it and my little face. And mm -hmm. so, especially yeah. where we live, you're saying a mile, I might get three houses in a mile here. That's true. But, <laughs> but it takes, it takes how many turns to get to a house here. So if my directional, if I have one every listing, turn, sure. If I have then, one listing yeah. in Wyndham and you're going, you're seeing right there, like where, you know, she's all over the place. Right. Exactly. And so the, the whole key to this is making sure that you have it set up so either you've got the time or you know you get you know teenagers and you know here you go drive around and put these signs out and then collect them so that you can use them but um build a sign does those uh for and you know we can or, or low end so if you need help putting that together talk to your ascs and you know we can give you that stuff all right so this wasn't a question that I was thinking of asking, but it came to me as we're sitting here talking. Okay. How do you handle the negotiations with your seller on commission? And do you have a, a, a specific conversation and do you reduce your commission at all? Like, what do you do and how does that work? Madeline, we'll start with you on this one. Ah, oh, the commission. <laughs> Yeah, you know, commission definitely varies. Um, it's not the same for everybody. Obviously, we always try to get 6% um, commission. Of course, that's always the goal. Um, it's not going to always be the case. I mean, when I have friends and family that I've worked with or whatever, I'm always going to take off, whether it's a half a percent or a percent um, working with them. I don't want to ever go... On, and I think we're allowed here to talk commission, right? I was just going to we're allowed. I was going to uh, put yeah. my broker hat on just for everybody else that's on the call. We can talk about numbers because we are in the same office. You yeah. can never okay. talk about, you no, can yeah. never put a number right. with another. Yeah, no, but another it's company. within our office and this yeah, is more right. strategy. We're not saying we're only doing this. It's This yeah. is just more of, and this is your yeah. business. You all set the right. commission for your so, own business. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, so typically 6% commission. And especially because they're getting the team, they're getting the whole thing. What I'm telling people right now is it's like, they're not even paying the commission because we're getting them so many offers over asking and they're getting to pick and choose that. Why would you ever even want to, this, this is for people who think they want to sell it on their own. You're never going to get the amount of people in that I'm going to get into your house. You're never going to be able to handle the uh, bidding war and vet everybody the way that I'm going to. But so you're not, it's almost like you're not even paying the commission because I'm going to get you so high over the asking price that that commission is really coming from the buyers at this point. So I just had one though, where the, the people, and this just happened, um, this was a friend of my daughter's, my daughter referred them and um, we went, we did a bunch of work for them. We helped them with getting COs and everything. And then she felt really bad and she came to me and she said, I feel terrible, but my husband's family has somebody and he's going to do it for 4%. And I was like, wow. I was like, um, okay. You know, and, and we, I said, look, that's negotiable for everybody. Um, and, you know, I talked to them about, you know, what, what value are they going to get for the 4%? And then in the end, she want, she had to go with him because she said that the husband's family was pressuring them so much and he was charging 4%, which I wouldn't do. Um, but now since fast forward two weeks later, their house came on the market. He took his own pictures that were so pathetic that she couldn't believe it. The write-up, everything was spelled wrong. There, it was run on sentences. There was really nothing about the house. She went to my daughter the other day and she says, I will never listen to my husband's family again. This was the worst experience I've ever had. Um, the pictures were horrible. I had to do the entire write up for him because he didn't know how to spell. He didn't know how to write up anything about my house. So, you know, and like my daughter had said, you know, you get what you pay for, you know, um, somebody who's willing to discount their commission that much 
Um, you know, what are they going to do, obviously, when they're negotiating, you know, for you? Are they going to be able to negotiate for you? My job is I'm a strong negotiator. I'm going to get you the highest amount and I'm going to make sure it's going to go to the closing table. So, you know, that's basically it. But, but I'm not going to lie. I do change my commission based on, you know, and if I have somebody who's in a really bad situation, I'm going to charge them a, a, a good commission. If I know what their story is, I, you know, I want to help people. It's not just about the money, but, you know, I do pay a lot of fees for, for having, you know, the team and paying a full-time assistant. And, you know, we do lots of back-end marketing that lots of other agents don't too. We pay for all that extra social media targeted marketing. Mm -hmm. um, you're not going to get that from everybody. Um, we pay for a professional photographer. Lots of agents don't even pay a good photographer. We do drone shots. We'll do visual staging in homes that are either vacant or whatever, so that your home is good. You know, people can see what is it going to look like when my furniture is in there. So, you know, we, we're paying a lot of extra money so that you're going to make more money. Right. So, and I try to tell them, you should really just care. What are you going to net? You know, it doesn't matter. Aren't you happy if we get paid a commission for working hard and doing a good job? It really just matters. How much am I going to make you? What are you going to net in your pocket? Absolutely. It's very well said. Thank you, Madeline. Yeah. Beth, what's your take on this? Um, I agree completely. And there's a fine line between um, giving all my, because I feel like sometimes if you say to somebody, this is all of what I do, and then they go back to the 4% person and say, she's going to do all this for, four, for whatever I'm charging. Will you do it for 4%? That's why I have the two different lists for if I go to a listing appointment, I'm not giving all my stuff anymore. I've been doing that for too long. But I mean, we mail postcards. I tell them that we have access to every Keller Williams agent, uh, you know, if it's luxury or whatever in downstate, I have a great connection. I have a great referral. Um, my negotiations, I make sure all the buyers are pre-qualified and I make sure I try, if they're with me, if they come through me, I make sure they're pre-qualified with a local bank. You know, you talked about Long Island. That's mm -hmm. something else I do when I have multiple offer, I'll say to the agent, if you're, if you're not qualified with a local bank, I, you know, I've had, I've run into trouble and, you know, we're not doing a survey on every property in Greene County. It's not how we work. A lot of downstate banks want that. So, um, but again, I, I try to be careful because I don't want to give them everything so they can go to somebody else and say, this is the list of what she's going to do for me. Uh, will you do that for me? But, um, I agree. It's, it's, you know, we've got the years of experience, um, you know, the professional pictures I send out, I do Facebook ads, I send out postcards, which are, and I want to just give a plug for the, our postcards that we have oh, yeah, here. Fantastic. They are amazing. They are, I should go grab one. I absolutely love them. They're big, they're glossy, and you can change them. So sometimes my just listed are, I changed where it says just listed to, um, 23 showings, uh, 23 showings and six offers in two days or something like that. Like I, and, and they have the, um, uh, the QR scan where you can yeah. go in and look at it. I mean, they are, I, I can't give them enough and they're cheap. I mean, I've done postcards my whole career. You can't get them any cheaper than that. Right. Um, and the access for these, in case you do not know, this is on the HV, uh, Hudson Valley Upstate Group page, and it's under the concierge, and so there, it's it's right there. Sorry, I I will give a little bit. Uh, so one of the things that you have to know, we live in a huge second home market, and I, I talked to the guy about it. He doesn't have your when you do a mailing, it has to go to the taxing address. That's you know where the taxes go. Um, so he only has the addresses of the second home, so you can upload your own CV uh, CVC file as well. But um, I, I love them and my customers love them. And, you know, I do them, you know, the hundred closest houses and you can even mm -hmm. pick if you go into a uh, real list, you can pick exactly like you can look at similar houses or, you know, for second homes. One of the things that I do is I'll look at homes that are assessed a little less than the house I'm selling. So if somebody wants to upgrade, they're getting this listing. So, um, you know, there's a lot you can do with real list. Um, yeah. Absolutely. Sorry, I, I got off on that tangent. No, 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 no. It's fine. And you know what? It's important that you that that we 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 know this. You know, and 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 these these are the things. This is like there are companies that you other other they they don't share, 
right? You're getting information from two of the top listing agents within our group because these ladies know what they're doing. And thank you so much for being so generous with your time and the and 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 the information because this is this is what makes Keller Williams special. So I'm I'm uh, I'm very appreciative. And I, as I think everybody else is too. I want to share one more thing. I don't know if we're going to get to it that I've been doing that I've been having sex with. <laughs> what, what did you say? I planned that, that I've been having <laughs> sex with. Oh my success. God. Success. success. <laughs> that was bad, man. Okay, all right. <laughs> well, we'll be deleting some of the recording here. <laughs> okay. Um, is the golden letter. I don't know if anybody's oh, yeah. heard of the yes, golden, golden letter. letter and yes. um and I have been using it. I've been using um doing handwritten. So um, and they say like you can hire, you can find some high school kids, go to see some high, that can write it for you. But um, and I, I do it different for every area. And I think again on um, with James Shaw, if you go onto his Facebook group, he has one there, and that's the one I used and just made it my own. Um, you know, one of the areas that I market is uh, Wyndham. It's a ski resort, so I'm like, you know, hey, ski season's opening up. If you know anybody or um, you know, I have buyers looking in your area. It's simple. You keep it simple and short and handwritten. They will open it. They'll open it. And I'm, I'm actually, I've gotten three appointments and for a, a little bit of money. And one of them was a 600,000. One's over a million. The other one's going to be around 350. Right. So, um, and they really work. I've also gotten phone calls from somebody that say, what do you know about my, like, you know, you get those nasty ones too. And I'm like, you know, I'm sorry, yeah. I'll take you off my list. Yeah. Um, make sure you write those whiners down and you take them off your list because yes. eventually they will come back and haunt they you. They call me, they call the broker. Your yeah. agent is sending me. Yeah. Your agent, and is it you? Yeah. <laughs> No, it's my agent. I can't stand them. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. we, we agree. We love those golden letters, Beth. Um, you know, my, my team has used them. We haven't used them just lately. And I do want to start doing them again because we've gotten a lot of listing appointments from mm -hmm. them. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and then when the people are ready to go, if they liked you and you did a good job in their house, they're going to call you to list, even if uh, one of your buyers doesn't buy their house. Right. But we've also had private sales go through that way for buyers yes. who are having a hard time yes, is both. Um, yeah, absolutely. getting things. The, look, um, I've done that just literally on social media too. I have a buyer looking for this type of house in this neighborhood with this school, elementary school or what have you. Anybody interested, give me a call. And the phone rang and I got, and many times I would get listings from that as well. So yes, you can do it with right. the golden letter, but if you have a presence on social media, um, I noticed that Rob had asked a question about LinkedIn. Do either of you use LinkedIn at all? Yeah. Um, well, I don't really personally do it, but my assistant um, definitely puts, um, put stuff of ours on LinkedIn, not just housing, but we put articles on, you know, real estate or whatever's pertinent going on, whether it's interest rates or whatever, but we're definitely um, present on LinkedIn, you know, right. weekly, weekly. Okay, great. And, and do you get business from that? And are you tracking it back? I haven't actually tracked back specific business to LinkedIn. I definitely get comments from business people that are, you know, that are are good comments and maybe people refer like sometimes I'll get referrals like I just got a referral from somebody and I asked you know how how they heard about me and they gave me the person's name and I don't you know, know the was. person there's your so, 10 rings right that we just yeah, talked about yeah so, yeah. so and, and she even said oh you might not know her but she says she sees you everywhere right and you know whatever so you kind of don't know you don't always know I mean I always try to find out as best I can and sometimes it's a friend of a friend. My friend used you. Hit my friend's friend used you. Mm -hmm. Whatever. Right. Um. So you don't know. Is it right LinkedIn? because you want to find that information out so that you can say thank you to somebody if possible because nothing. You know, it's 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 important there. Yeah. All right. 
we're coming close to the end of our hour. Rob, did you have anything that you wanted you you your your to ask about the LinkedIn situation? No, I think that's that was great. I appreciate that. I'm just connected to so many people on LinkedIn from my previous career. Yeah, well, that's where you want to use it because if you've got that audience, you yeah, know, I, it's important. I have a huge audience, but it's it's in the thousands, but it's international. So mm -hmm. I'm trying to understand how I can connect people internationally. Okay, well, affiliate. hi, you work for Keller Williams. They're the largest real estate company in the world, and right. you can make those referrals. And call me, we'll talk about this, but Madeline, okay. do you have anything to say about that? Yeah, I'm just going to say referrals are such a huge part of our business. So not just getting referrals from our agents, but we give so many referrals. So I'm always asking people, you know, if you know anybody moving anywhere in the United States or in the world, I have the best agents to refer. And we do so much referral um, business through Keller Williams. So I have people all the time. My family's moving to Florida. They're moving to North Carolina. They're moving to Ireland. They're moving whatever. And I get them great agents and I call them. I vet them. I go through the whole thing. But for you, Rob, to put on to LinkedIn that you have the amazing network of, of, of real estate agents, no matter where they're moving, that if they call you, that you will do all the legwork to make sure you're going to get them the most professional agent. And RKW, you can literally find out that neighborhood they're moving to, who sells the most there. I go through it. I look how many buy sides, how many sell sides. Um, and we find them someone great, we call them, we interview them, we vet them, and then we give them to them. And people are beyond thrilled that, right. and you're making 25% referral fee. Mm -hmm. which is a That's great. Thing. Thank you, Luz. We'll, we'll talk about that. Definitely. Absolutely. Thank you. Right, Thank does you, anybody Madeline. have any other questions before we wrap up? I'm going to just say one last thing, if you don't mind, just one other thing, because we don't all get every listing we go on, right? Or sometimes you go on a listing and people um, either sold it themselves, like I had two this month where people sold it themselves, and then they call me up and they feel bad and they're all apologies. And just the best way always, and I'm sure most people know it, but not just to be so super gracious and say, look, I, I wish you all the best. I'm so happy for you. But what, what I always say to them is, look, the one thing you could do for me, if you don't mind, is if you would just refer me to somebody that you know and care about, I would be so thankful just for that referral. Mm -hmm. And sometimes people feel really guilty that they didn't use so it. <laughs> and those people will refer you sometimes more than anybody else because they feel bad that you did right. all that work for them and then they didn't get to. So, you know, it's okay to use a little bit of that Irish guilt. I do. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I, I just had one of those and I have done this in the past. I offer to represent them on the sales side for half of the commission. I, you know, I say to them, look, I do this full time. This, there's yeah. legal things involved. You know, um, I'm happy to represent you and I would represent, be representing only you, not the seller that, I mean, the buyer, they would have to use their attorney, but, and I've done, I've closed some deals like that. So I'm representing yeah. just the seller. So, you know, I, I said this, you know, this is what I do full time. This last lady was a priest. I'm like, you know, you, you know, your business and I know mine. I said, you know, you, you'll have an attorney your, and your attorney will do all this work, but I'm here to tell you they're busy. I would give you one packet, everything would be done. I would oversee the whole thing for you. And um, I've done business like that. I want to say one other thing for me that, again, I don't always tout myself. You'll rarely see me say I sold 65 houses or whatever I did, but you will see me um, promoting the community. And one of the things that I do is um, I always sponsor a, um, a, a little league or and a football. And one of the things I'm going to start doing this year is taking the teams for ice cream. Oh, how like, fun. That's getting uh, my face out there. You know what right. I mean? And how cheap is ice cream, right? So um, again, it's about community and your connection for me. Absolutely. That's really what the right. most important thing. And the other thing is when you don't get those listings, put them in your database, get, let them start getting the emails, you know, keep them, keep them, you know, keep them and yeah. text them once in a while, you know, once the list, if they sell the listing, whatever, text them, keep in yeah. touch with them because maybe their agent wasn't so great. And you were just by staying on top of it. Were right. great. Well, what do they call those? Those are the orphans, right? Once orphans. the transaction yeah. is done. So you want to make sure that you're in touch with people. All right, ladies, you are phenomenal. We could talk about this all day long, but we got to get back to our lead gen. So listen, thank you. This is on our um, 
It's going to be on the YouTube channel later today. Kelly's going to make sure that happens because she's magical. And Kelly, are you going to do that edit for me? One thing, Liz. Hey, Liz, hold on. Try. Don't edit it. It was great. <laughs> but it was so great. I might just keep it. <laughs> okay, wait. Somebody said, Liz, hold on. Who has a question? It's Larry. I mean, wants to remind everyone about something. Oh. Okay, May 12th. If you didn't get to sign up, please do. Oh, Red Day. That's Turn right. Up. That's right. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. We're going to have a great day. So in all of our markets, this is our chance to give where we live because we are all about community. Thank you, everybody. Have a wonderful day, ladies. Love you.